Here is an example of a non stationary time series. What is it? It's simply the SPY closing price adjusted for uh, split and dividend over the last uh, 10, 11 years. As you can see, anybody know the SPY is in a huge bull one since the financial crisis. And whatever stationary test you apply to it, it will fail. It is simply not stationary. What that means is it's unreasonable to use the SPY price as a feature because in some part of data it is around 100 and in some other oops in some other part of data it's about 300 it is we are never going to back to 100 right you know in the future we will never hopefully we'll never see 100 uh, anymore so this is useless for a feature as is because we will never see those prices back in 2009 hopefully we never know but hopefully um so what are we going to do? Are we going to throw away the uh, SPY price as a feature? Not necessarily. Okay. Well, here is another, but more on that later. The second one uh, example is the return uh, of a uh, a pair, uh, a pair of a portfolio that consists of a long one share of a GDX a GLD ETF and short 1.6 shares of GDX uh, ETF. This is a gold um, pair. You know, is is arbitraging between the gold um, price and the uh, the gold miner stocks uh, ETF, okay. But this portfolio is is stationary at least for that period. You can see that it doesn't go up too much, and when it go up, it comes back down. It's been reverting. That is the kind of uh, feature that we can use. Well, this is the kind of time series that we can use as a feature because um, you know if you are going to make a prediction now here, uh, it's okay because. Uh, you know, it's just a very similar price as when the data first started. So this is called stationary price series and it's suitable for use as a feature. 